Hello everyone, this is James Cushing with Gadgets.net and ggadgets.com. I'm here with the new iPad 3rd generation, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7, .7, which is the latest Samsung tablet, and then I have last year's uh, Acer Iconia Tab A500, um, all fairly comparable in hardware, um, all one gigabyte of RAM, and around one gigahertz dual core processors though the Samsung tab is the Exynos um, in-house built 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor the iPad runs the one gigahertz dual core A5X and then the Acer tab runs the Tegra 2 from last year and that is a one gigahertz dual core also and the iPad is running on iOS 5.1 the Samsung tab on Honeycomb 3.2 with a future ICS update coming and then the Acer tab is rooted and running uh, Honey Villain uh, 1.4 which is a custom built version of uh, Honeycomb 3.2 which was designed for the Acer 500. So we're going to run through just a couple of quick consumer style tests. We're not going to be testing uh, uh, benchmarks or anything like that. We're just kind of going to go from a consumer standpoint of uh, performance here using some standard apps that are available both in the Android market and in the iOS App Store. So we're going to start here and load up the Pulse News Reader. You can see it loads very fast there on the iPad a little bit slower on the Galaxy tab and about the same on the Iconia tab. As far as looks go, everything's pretty similar across all three tablets. Scrolling transitions on the iPad are very smooth, uh, not a hitch at all there on the Galaxy tab. A little bit slower to load images. should also mention that both the Galaxy tab and the iPad are on Verizon 4G LTE while the Acer tab is Wi-Fi only. So same as with the Galaxy tab, um, the Acer is actually a little snappier loading images than the Tab 7.7 .7. However, the iPad, uh, you can see there is absolutely no loading time in images between the transitions there. Next up, we're going to take a look at Google Currents. Pretty snappy load times on all of those. Acer tab lags behind by half a second, but it's still pretty good. Again, transitioning between pages is really smooth, and you see the uh, images load there really quickly, too. And there's really no uh, hitch in between page loads here on the Galaxy tab either. Let's go over to the Iconia tab. Not quite as smooth as the other two. Obviously last year's processor can be a tiny bit slower. And it doesn't have the uh, separate graphics processors that the uh, other two do here, and especially the iPad has the quad-core uh, separate graphics chip with the A5X. Let's take a look at Google Books. And 
iPad did take slightly longer to actually download the book there, but still has the same uh, smooth page turning transitions. Really good there, good rendering. Galaxy Tab, a little bit different. The rendering is still really good, um, but the pages actually seem to fold in the animation on this one. Whereas with the iPad, there we go. Now it's getting a little smoother. It must needed uh, some time to adjust. And same with the Acer Tab. All pretty smooth on the transitions. So we're going to take a look at the TED Talks app. Really good load times on all three devices. So fairly comparable there. Again, paging very smooth on the iPad. It did have a little bit of a hitch there. So overall, very quick transitions. Animations are good. Now you can see the interface is slightly different on the Android version. Um, in the, on the side here, you've got some uh, quick tags, where the iPad version has no tags. Although, at the bottom of the iPad version here, we can see a couple of buttons that are missing with the Android version, um, including tags. So tags does not come as a standard interface option. Rather, you can actually hit tags, and it'll bring up a separate page there. But you've also got uh, like an inspire me button which brings up some options there that you can choose from um, as well as a themes option and then your saved talks. Um, the Android version does not have that. Uh, it does have a featured or all talks and your my talks there as well as a listen button and should be the same there on the Iconia tab. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a look at the Netflix interface. Maybe. I'm not signed into the accounts here on the iPad or the Galaxy tab, uh, the Acer tab. And you can see the interface a little bit choppy. Let's go ahead and boot up the speed test. We're going to use speedtest.net. And again, both of the uh, tablets here are running on Verizon LTE, where the Acer tab is running on Wi Fi. So let's go ahead and begin a test on all three of these. Now, the iPad version of speedtest.net has some additional animation that the Android version does not. Uh, you can see the, the needle so the iPad is already done uh, with the download and upload um, and download speeds you can see there uh, about 15.8 megabits per second on the download side and 2 on the upload side which is really good uh, now let's come over to the Galaxy tab, and you can see there, uh, not quite as impressive, 7.27 megabit per second on the download side, and 0.56 on the upload side. And over Wi-Fi, 
which is from AT&T, unfortunately. We've got uh, 4.18 megabits per second download and 0.82 on the upload side. So, oddly enough, the iPad and the Samsung tab here, which are both on Verizon LTE, uh, had significant differences in download speeds. Just do it again. Let's go ahead and do a second test between these two here and see if we get any kind of different result. And iPad very swift and already done where Samsung is still working and actually got you in a little better there at 17 flat and 1.7 on the upload side and did get a little better over here 9.92 on the download side 0.88 upload side <clears throat> and there you have the new iPad third generation Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 and Acer Iconia Tab A500.